Hey everyone, with the weather starting to get a little bit nicer up here in Massachusetts, I thought it would be a good time to share some outdoor math activities that you can do with your students. Now, if you are teaching either hybrid or fully in person, your students might be wearing masks right now and going outdoors and having that option in the nice weather is a fun way for them to possibly be able to take a little mask break, learn with their friends and peers, and just have a little fun. Right now, I know my son Theo, who's in kindergarten, does have to sit pretty far away from his other peers, so he loves getting the chance to go outside, take the mask off for a minute, and kind of run around. I've actually created a bunch of little outdoor activity videos that you can go ahead and see right here. I made a playlist for teachers who can do it with their students, or they can also send these videos home to parents as fun ideas to do with their kids over the summer. So let's just dive right in. I have two fun outdoor math games to share that you can do with your students or your kids at home. Let's go. Outdoor math activity number one that you can do with your students is called number line hop. Now this is pretty simple and all you really need is some concrete space and sidewalk chalk. To set this game up, you will have students probably work either in pairs or maybe in a small group of three or four. And my first and second grade students, and actually probably even my kindergarten students, I would have them try to draw the number line themselves. So they would go ahead and draw out a big long number line in some empty area. And then you will decide what numbers you want on the number line. In kindergarten, I would probably have them do numbers one through 10 or one through 20. And then my first and second grade students, depending on the skill we are going to work on, I might have them, instead of counting by ones, they might draw a big number line and have it, you know, skip count by fives all the way up to 50 or by tens up to 100 or 200. The act of actually making this number line with your students is already a little bit of a math skill because they have to use their spatial reasoning and their ideas of what fractions are to go ahead and talk them through, here's the whole number line. If we're going to 20, let's start by doing halfway and we'll mark that as 10 and then figuring out the different increments in between. Once you've decided what kind of number line you wanna make with your kids, then it is as simple as hopping to the correct number. So in kindergarten, if you have a number line zero to 20, you might call out and have students find the number 13 and they can start down at the one and they can go ahead and hop to the 13. If you have that number line only going to 10, you might wanna try some simple addition or subtraction for them to go ahead and solve and then hop to that correct answer. In first grade, I would definitely have them do a number line to 20 and we would practice a lot of different addition and subtraction skills. It's a really easy way to get students out, get them outside and get them moving while still reviewing some math skills at the end of the year. Now with first and second grade, you might also want to try some place value identification where you would draw that big number line and have them definitely skip count by 10 so there's plenty of space in between and you might say the number 94 and students would have to go stand where they best think the number 94 is in between that 90 and 100. And depending how big your number line is with second grade that might be separated by 50s or by 100s and they can still do the same type of activity. So that is number hop, super easy to do. And if it doesn't rain, then you can keep that number line out there and keep practicing a few skills at least for a few days in a row. I did this activity with my son Theo yesterday who was in kindergarten and he had a blast. Here's what it looked like. All right, ready? Number line hop, hop to the number 12. <laughs> 12, hop to the number eight. All right, ready for a tricky one? Yep. Hop to this one. What is six plus four? 10. Hop to the answer. Ooh, okay, what's this one? What's 10 minus five? Yeah. Okay, activity number two is called bucket toss, and this one is great for data collection, and technically it can be played indoors too. Now you do need a couple things in order to play this game, but don't get caught up on what exactly I'm using. Just try to take the ideas and apply it to any other, you know, item. So 
I hope that'll make sense in a minute. So for bucket toss, you will need at least two different buckets of any kind. And these are just some old ones I have from Ikea. It's a little blue bucket here. And right now it has a bunch of markers inside that I would just empty out for this activity. But like I'm saying, don't get caught up. You don't need this blue Ikea bucket. You just need something that you can throw a ball or a bean bag or something into. Now, if you have any sort of clear containers, you could grab a couple of those and you can just cut out a construction paper circle. So it has a different color because you want to differentiate the two buckets that students will be throwing something into. So once they have containers, you'll need something for them to throw. I happened to buy a big bag of ping pong balls like a long time ago for all sorts of different activities that I do in the classroom and at home with my own kids. It was pretty cheap. I'll actually link them down in the description because we use these in all sorts of different ways. Now, in order to go ahead and play this game, all you're going to need is some space and students will work either in pairs or small groups again with maybe three or four students and they will just set up their two buckets and then take a few steps back. You want it to be far enough where they can, they have to try pretty hard to get it in the bucket, but not that it's so far away that they can't actually, you know, score any points. Now, before you get started, you will want to determine a number of tosses each student or the team together are going to take. So you might say, okay, we're going to get 10 tosses or maybe 20 tosses, and there'll be three different categories for students to score. Basically, they might either toss it in and it might land in the blue bucket. They might toss it in, it might land in the green bucket, or they might toss it and completely miss. So it'll be no bucket. You can decide if you want students to work together as a team and do all the tosses together by taking turns, or if you want students to keep tally of their own data collection by each of them taking 10 tosses. So they'll all have different data. In order to collect this data, I would give students an easy data collection sheet that looks like this right here. And every time they go ahead and take a toss, they will mark off with either a tally mark or a check mark, however they want to do it, which bucket they landed in. Now, if you're in kindergarten, I would suggest having them work as a team. That way, after they've gone ahead and they've collected this data, they can kind of meet up and talk about which bucket they landed in the most, which one they landed in the least, and things like that. If you are a first or second grade teacher, I would have them take their data, whether individually or as a team, and then individually, they need to go ahead and make a bar graph or a picture graph or some sort of way for them to represent the data that they've collected. Then once your students have gone ahead and created that graph, that's when I would pull them back as a whole group and ask them to answer some questions about their own data and graphs. And as you can see, this game could definitely be done indoors or outdoors, but I put it as an outdoor game because it's a fun one that you can kind of separate, make some space for each other and just go have fun and get moving and practice math at the same time. So there are two fun math games that you can play with your students outdoors or with your own kids at home over the summer. That data collection sheet was really easy to make. So I'll go ahead and link that for free down in the description below. And if you're looking for any other outdoor activities or game ideas, be sure to check out that outdoor playlist. I have a lot in there that are just a bunch of fun. As always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. So I know, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you next time. Bye.